So as we look at the school appropriations and revolving, as Mayor Holiday um, announced at uh, City Council and also formed the district, uh, the city allocation has increased uh, with $130,000 for the um, grade six world language. And that's the city appropriation has increased 4.42%. Uh, this is very familiar um, of the different appropriations of revolving that we've been sharing over the past uh, few weeks. So this really hasn't changed much other than um, the city allocation. Uh, the salaries and expenses, we have increased the salaries. We added the $65,000 uh, for the grade three teacher. Um, so we ended up, that was, if you recall, on a priority list. Uh, we've kind of moved that into the budget right now. And we're very comfortable with the grade three teacher at the 65,000. So when you go back and look at previous budgets, um, you'll see that increase to the 65,000. Um, so as we're looking at the staffing increases in the budget and looking at staffing, um, these are the breakdown for the different schools. So at the Bresnahan School, we have uh, a math instructional coach and also the grade three teacher. Uh, at the Mullen School, we have an interventionist, um, a full-time language-based teacher and instructional assistant. And as you recall, uh, throughout the budget process, we're talking about the language-based programming. Uh, that we're developing district-wide. And this is one area um, that we're going to focus on for next year. Uh, middle school, um, an increase in a 0.3 speech and language. Um, the two Spanish teachers uh, and a 0.6 increase in reading teacher. At the high school, an increase, and this is all really for support, uh, a 0.1 uh, increase of uh, a reading teacher and a 0.2 math teacher. Um, and then also as we are taking a look at the budget going into next week, um, we do believe that we'll be able to fund that um, college and career counselor that you'll see going in uh, to next week's finalized budget. And then also the district is a 0.5 out of district placement in grade eight caseload. And then the behavioral health um, coordinator specialist that we've talked about in previous budget presentations. Breakdown and summary by the school. Um, you can see each increase uh, for the high school, the North, the Mullen, the Bresnahan, and then system wide. And we just remember the system wide also includes uh, our special education costs uh, in there. And that's a breakdown um, by school. And this is also um, recapping a lot of the information that we've been presenting over the past few weeks. So then we did the percentages and um, how we've broken down the budget. And you can see uh, overall, we're pretty even uh, throughout um, the, the district uh, and working with all the principals in their school councils uh, on their budget preparation. So what we did for this presentation is kind of narrowed down. Uh, if you're looking at the ESSER two. Um, grants, uh, it's really broken down into a, a few different areas. It's really utilizing uh, and enhancing the technology, uh, the staffing and the instructional materials that are really allowing us to respond to the COVID uh, pandemic and then the post uh, COVID uh, re-entry going into next school year. I won't read through all of those, but we really try to list out the technology software um, that we uh, implemented with the ESSA 2 and increase in allocations of the ESSA 2 grant. Our district supply staffing and technology continue. This is the district uh, staffing. Um, as you can see, we've been talking about this, I think, for the past few weeks. Um, and this kind of highlights the different areas of the ESSA 2. Uh, and staffing support. And then the last slide here that you all have is uh, supplies um, and materials, um, which all tie right back uh, to supporting of the students uh, and families um, in the district um, in the post-COVID uh, year. 
and they're all kind of highlighted there. So you can see we have allocated more of that extra two funding. Understanding uh, July 1st, the extra three funding will be available over a three year period, uh, which will also help support uh, the district uh, as we move forward. I also wanted um, just to throw, I think we have this, uh, we've talked about the numbers uh, pretty consistent. I think uh, over the years, um, you know, one of the pieces uh, that we're losing a lot of kids and a lot of kids are going to private school. Um, it's been pretty consistent, I think, over uh, uh, the past five years. But when you really start looking at the numbers over a 10 year period, we fluctuate around 150 students um, back and forth. And that's the Roman as of October 1st. Very similar for a 10 year period, um, we're fluctuating. This year is an anomaly. Uh, as you all know, uh, we had a lot of uh, students that chose to homeschool. Um, we also had a lot of students um, that have, you know, went to private school uh, for this year, and we do anticipate those students uh, returning into next year. Very similar to our 2019 numbers before the pandemic. So now, if, if you recall, that first budget that you all received that was actually in the packet that was uh, the budget presentation uh, similar information from the February 23rd preliminary budget and as you can see uh, by adding the college and career counselor at $65,000 that we believe we'll be able to do that for Monday's uh, finalized budget that would leave us with two positions on priority list and that would be the tech integrator at the Bresnahan, and then also the literacy coordinator grade six to 12. Uh, that's all we would have left um, in that uh, beginning preliminary budget of a wish list of um, funding all of the positions throughout the district. And that's just our quick summary. Uh, we anticipate uh, for the third, which is Monday night, for the school committee to have the finalized budget um, with all of the line items and, and ready hopefully for a vote on Monday night of the third. All right. I don't need to be on Zoom anymore, correct? Uh, no, you're sharing your screen. I'm all set. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Uh, Bruce, you have a question? Yeah. Um, are you guys formulating sort of a, a vision or a plan for how SSC might impact the district? Yeah. You don't have to share that plan now. Yeah. I, I think for, I think for um, our team, it's, it's very similar. As we start getting more information on the criteria, we're, we're anticipating it's going to be different buckets in support of students, families, and districts. Um, but once we have the criteria on how the extra three funding uh, can be spent, then we'll start to formulate the plan. As you can see with extra two, um, we're really just providing a lot more support for the district, you know, through the technology, through the materials, through the intervention uh, and support in the classroom. Um, so once we have more information, we'll break down like over a three year period on what we're looking for that extra three funding to assist us with. Anybody else have any questions for the superintendent? Do we have Nancy up here have any questions too? She's in the back. She's saying no. Are <laughs> we asking our questions now and then you're going to open it up for public comment? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a couple questions. Um, so, Sean, with the extra two, am I just reading this right? So, you, it's a two year and we're spending almost all of it this year. Is that correct? Correct. Well, like 20000 left over. And then yeah. after that, the extra three, which will probably have similar buckets. That's what I'm saying. Correct. Okay. So, that's. 600,000 or so, maybe we can spread that out each year. You'd have a good chance to spend the next three years. Correct. Right as well. Okay. Right. And that, and that was, um, Mr. Raiden, that's why we kind of were more aggressive with the SO2 once we got right. any right. the information right. the SO3 is coming. We were very conservative with SO2, um, not understanding where SO3 would fall. 
Okay, one more. Oh, so looking at the priority list, I think that's great if we get the college into the on that. Is there another, I know in years past we've had like tiers of priority on priority one, priority two. Is there another list somewhere? I just feel like we should have a, a list here of like stuff that we'd love to get in this year if we could. If we can't, that's fine, but at least we're looking at a list of like, you know, what we can do to, to make ourselves better from year after year. Is there something like that that exists and we're just not seeing it? Or? Well, I think for, for the preliminary budget, we kind of had all of the ask uh, going into next year and all the needs that we had. Um, but as we were chipping away and, and working on this budget, so we're down just the next those two positions. Um, but I think as we begin our like new strategic plan with the new personnel coming on board, uh, we'll definitely have like a new five-year plan and five-year vision uh, to move forward. Okay, that's great. I just think I know a lot of us have been asking that for one of the next two kind of ways to see where we're going, especially going into the, the new strategic plan. So Correct. That would be helpful. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? There's a mayor talking to Sean all the time. Nobody has anything to ask? We're going to do that? I have some questions about the language of that here. I don't know if you want to talk to those or if you want me to ask them one by one. Or, I mean, some of it goes along with Sean's question. Like, you know, so if we add these, these positions to sixth grade, like I'm, I'm struggling and I was struggling with it last year and I'm still struggling with this year. I just don't know how it how it grows. Right? I assume that because many, if not most of the kids using the knock started in Spanish too, that we had some teachers who were teaching Spanish one move to teach Spanish two and then they'll move yeah. up. So the, the whole key I mean, if you recall, part of the entry plan, you know, when I first got it, the first 100 days, this was a big piece uh, for many of the constituents that we talked about, about bringing back that robust language program K-12. Um, so one of the pieces that we did is working with Dr. Shreff, who's been with the district for a couple of years now. Uh, if you recall, she did uh, the presentation um, and her forte is to really build language programs um, within school districts. So the whole idea with us um, in working towards this <coughs> is really focusing on proficiency tied to the uh, certificate of bioliteracy. So it's really um, not necessarily, well, we're going to offer like two years here and then like sequential regarding levels of the um, classes. It's really to develop a comprehensive program that our students are proficient where they are passing becoming bilingual, um, you know, once they're in high school. So working at the middle school really define that uh, and what proficiency is looking like at the middle school working with the high school is the whole idea. Now for us to focus on Spanish, it was kind of like a best practice in the sense of focus on one language, Let's do this well, and then we can start bringing other languages and other possibilities into the fold. Um, and so even with a pandemic, uh, that work has still been going on. Uh, Dr. Shreff's been working uh, within both schools and working with both faculty in developing this comprehensive uh, program, once again, that we need to have. I hear that, mm -hmm. and I've been hearing that. I'm, I'm just having a hard time understanding what that looks like. Like we're adding. So when I say that, like sometimes more is just more. Like it's, it's good to have more language classes. Correct. And if we already had everything that we wanted, more is more. But we are making some choices. Right. So for example, we're not starting German or a second language, whatever that might be in the middle school. Correct. Um, like you said, I think this also points to Sean's question. You said that there is uh, a plan to develop the performing and visual arts tracks in the coming years Correct. that we're not putting into place now. Not right now. We're not choosing the college and career person or the, the literacy support for the secondary literacy support. So while we're making those choices, I'm having a hard time understanding what adding sixth grade is actually going to add. 
Well, I think it gives it gives you that that next layer of the idea of having our students being proficient in bilateral by the time they graduate. Um, so that is the big piece at the middle school of how that proficiency is going to look at the middle school tied into the high school. So, and that's part of that whole assessment with Dr. Strep coming in, looking at our internal assessments, working with the teachers, and really up in the game, so to speak, um, so our students are truly bi bilingual, even, um, you know, even high school. And, then, and I know we said it's not attached to the class issue, to the, the seal of bioliteracy is going to be run through the um, assistant superintendent's office. And Ms. Pick sent an email about that this year. Uh, and so I'm trying to figure out, is there a spot though that we can safely say if a student finishes Spanish blank that we feel pretty good that they would be able to pass, I'm assuming it's some sort of an assessment? Yeah, that's that Avent place place assessment. Right. So is there so that that standardized test? Ties directly to the bioliteracy. So even, for example, right now we're working on our assessments and working with teachers. So let's say you're, you're in the honors three and you received an A, right? But by working with Dr. Sheff and, and looking at the avid placer, you may not be, when you take that test, that ties directly to the bioliteracy. So you may be short. For it's good information for our teachers regarding their curriculum uh, and becoming biliter biliteral in the sense that you know, we have to up and, and make our language program more robust. And that gives us accurate data uh, to support our students. So the, is there a goal for us to say that like by the end of Spanish 4, we want to build our curriculum so that by the end of Spanish 4, that our kids will be able to to pass that is that exactly is there a goal of that sort right now yeah. that's that's the goal right now but right now we're still in the assessment remember we've only been really looking at this is the first year we had grade seven right on part of the team um, and this is the second year that dr uh, trust been working with our teachers but that's the ultimate goal is to have our curriculum especially in the world language and right now we're focused on spanish um, to achieve the biliteracy certificate. So it ties right back to that goal. So we are hoping like by let's say Spanish four that our students will be ready, if not, you know, receiving the biliteracy certificate. And is there a reason, sorry, last question about this credit, is there a reason why we're not going to hire two German teachers to have German and Spanish in seventh and eighth grade a choice? Correct. So, so we decided almost in, instead of trying to do a lot of things at once, we really are focusing right now on Spanish. So we really want, when we're looking at the world language. We want to make sure that we get the Spanish right, and then we'll bring on other languages after that. So right now, it's still at the high school. They still have the German, um, you know, being offered at high school. But we're working on the, I guess, the correlation with the middle school and the high school regarding the Spanish. Right? Um, if, if the goal is efficiency, you know, am I reading into the information that you sent us, but in order to achieve efficiency, are there classes that we haven't even designed yet that are going to be part of the sequence? It, that's part of that assessment and working with our teachers. So really understanding what, what are the standards for a true by, you know, becoming by literacy, uh, having that certificate. And then going back and looking at our curriculum to make sure we're in sync. Um, and that's been a lot of the work that the teachers have been doing uh, with Dr. Shaft to make sure. So that's the whole goal is actually our curriculum will be tied directly to the uh, standards of the bioliteracy program. Oh, yeah, I would imagine at that point, too, because we're treating that the middle school core classes right now, that if we ever added classes, you have to really look at how you're doing everything. Like, what is, what's at the core, or, or you just look at the new, the new language of the Correct. Okay. Well, well, I think in, in part, and you know, for further discussions, I sent that you know uh, frameworks for everyone. 
but there's 10 principles on a language really tied to college and career readiness in like global education. So it's a whole new framework of uh, world language and the importance of that. Um, but that's the ultimate goal. And then to really start trickling down into the elementary school. Um, so, I mean, we're still in the be beginning phases of this. Remember three years ago, we didn't, when I first came here, we didn't really have much at the middle school other than an introductory. Uh, but this has been, I think, a systematic approach. Uh, we want to do it well, so that's kind of why we're focusing just on one language right now, um, and then gravitate to even more in the cold one. Thanks. Uh, knowing that it's tough to learn a language remotely this year has presented a number of challenges, and uh, my question relates to looking at teaching goals, if you will. Have you, or what does it look like in terms of the teaching load for Spanish, if you will, this year in grade seven, as what it will compare to next year with the two additional teachers? Yeah, so I think that that's, that's part of the, I guess the work and kind of the excitement is we're bringing the whole language department district-wide together. So once we add grade six, then grade six, seven, and eight, working with Dr. Treff will then start to really develop the program on you know, what what does proficiency look like and what are the you know the aspects of that language program. So it's gonna probably change a little bit from grade seven now that you're gonna have a grade six and then grade seven, two, eight, and then up into the high school. So, so really the, bringing them all together. So the loads will probably get a little smaller. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit I think you'll still have the you'll still have the numbers of students in the classes, right. but the curriculum and the framework may change. Okay. Yeah. And that will probably be ongoing right. as we're working towards that sale of bilingual. I'm just asking from the standpoint of like how many students the teacher will be responsible for. So, so as part of the um, grade six, seven, and eight, the language program is part of the team. Okay. So they will be part. So instead of having the four content, you'll have five okay. content. So that language program. The other really nice piece of this, and that we've seen this year by having it in grade seven and eight, is the interdisciplinary connection among the team. So as we're developing, we're talking about, you know, working with Michael Eatman and cultural competency, which is just bringing culture in into a lot of the content areas now too. So that's a, another I think win uh, for the kids. Thank you. Um, could you say that the college and career counselors are going to wiggle things around so you can set that? Thing? Yeah, so for the next, that's going to be in, in into the uh, final budget proposal. The two items left on, on that wish list are the uh, literacy coordinator 6 to 12 and the tech integrator at the uh, freshman. So effectively, what you've done is move Spanish in and taken the tech person, the president out. The, the tech, the uh, we had that on the priority list, the uh, tech integration at the Breads. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Last, so we, we moved two more. We actually moved three more positions in. We moved uh, um, foreign language two uh, grade six teachers, and then we moved in uh, the grade three, and now we're going to move in um, with the work that Nancy and I are doing now. We feel comfortable moving in. The college and career counselor. So the two positions left that are still on a priority list would be um, the literacy coordinator and then the tech integration at the president handbook. So I think the last one we saw had the Spanish and literacy. Those are the two that were on priority list. Correct. So what is the president going to lose by not having a tech integrator? Um, I don't think it. I don't think they're they're losing. Um, it's for us. You know, as we were looking, um, as we all know, like Catherine Page has been phenomenal. Um, so she's been working um, like half time. She's overseeing a media specialist in the library, um, and then also does support uh, teachers. But we really felt the tech integrator at the elementary school uh, could provide that ongoing support for teachers and students, um, especially you know with uh, how we had to be so remote this year uh, and online. So that's one piece that we'll continue to look at, um, but it's not having a, I guess, a major impact on uh, on the students. It's just 
that doesn't plan, similar to the support of the literacy plan and six to swap. We really wanted to tie that in, and I did some school committee information on that, really tie that into the constructive dialogue and the work that Central Partners is doing. So not only the literacy coordinator would also assist um, with all of the departments, but it's really communication in, in science, communication, and math, all of the different departments, along with um, really assisting our teachers with the constructive dialogue is part of the curriculum in all of those classes, giving the students an opportunity to really utilize those 21st century skills uh, within the class. So those two positions um, are still on our priority list and something that we'll continue to, to keep there and, and see what we can do. Uh, all right, thanks. So some more things on this. Um, all right, so say you do whatever it is you gotta do to move stuff to the college your career goes in. Correct. Tech people would be great, but do you think you can live without it for a year? A literacy coordinator, that means it would only be eighty thousand dollars global. Yeah. The mayor's not gonna like this. So I thank her for giving me money for the Spanish, but then at the last meeting, can we get more from the appropriation? And it seems to me that eighty thousand dollars is almost no money in terms of a $35 million budget. So I'm going to say it again, it would be great to have all of your wish lists in the budget. I know we talk about it being unbalanced, but at the moment, the budget is vapor, really. Right? It's based on a recommendation that the administration wants to use or give us, which is great. Um, if you really think you need a literacy coordinator for you know, that grade range, it's nothing pennies really of the, of the grand scheme of things. Um, I, I, just think, I think we should ask them. Bruce, do you have a comment? Yeah, um, in, in terms of, I, I would like to see both of those positions. You know, really useful. Um, is, is there anything that's going on at central office that might provide some coverage that are not totally a of support? Yeah, so it's, I, I mean, that's the other piece. So I think um, we will continue uh, to move forward and to support, I think, uh, all of those initiatives. It's just, you know, when, when you have someone overseeing that, um, some of that work can get done a lot faster. Uh, but we aren't just going say, oh, well, you know, we're not going to continue the construction dialogue for kids and all of that. So we will work, uh, you know, for that area with our teacher leaders. Um, and then the technology piece uh, provide more support for our uh, president and teachers under that. So it just the difference is is uh, uh, those initiatives are going to take a little bit longer because you're not going to have uh, people overseeing that. But that will obviously those positions, as uh, Mr. Callahan said, are on. They're not going off that priority list, and, and if we're not uh, implementing them this year, they'll be on. Oh, Mayor? John, is there any chance that you could use SS money to fund any one of these? Yeah, we, we moved, uh, I think, a lot of our SS2 funding over to, to support on some of that staffing. But that's something that Nancy Lysak and I uh, should take a look at, especially knowing what the extra three is, is going to support. Because right the now, where we are with the whole budget, including the increase that I agreed to cover for the uh, three Spanish teachers, we are a $140,000 gap with the budget right now. Yeah. And even though you say it's short money, it still means that I can't hire a, a parking person. Or I can't. I understand. I'm just here to, my job is to, to work for the kids, not I understand. The That's all. Although I would love more park people too. Better sidewalks and all the other stuff. But yeah, I think, uh, as I said, I mean, the one thing we want to be, you know, you know, we're very careful in being selective because, you know, as if you recall, I don't know if you recall the, the grant, but there was an ARA grant, special education grant that was funded. And a lot of districts funded positions through that staffing position. And then it goes away and there was a lot of layoffs to that. So. It's part, although we have moved some money over to support those staffing positions, it's something that 
we're really conscious of where, you know, we don't want to put, we can hire everybody off of the grant money, and then all of a sudden the grant money's gone and we're coming, we're coming back. But that's something like Nancy Lysick and Alicia team, and we all work together really good to look at. So um, if, once we get more information also on ESSER 3, I mean, right now we've got some information, but we haven't got like the specific exact information how it's going to impact the district and Newberry Court. Um, so that's something where we're holding off on, but that we may be able to use that down the road. Too. And I think the other piece that we have to remember is that um, we don't have guidelines from the U.S. Treasury yet on the ARPA money, which is the next round of stimulus money, and how we can spend it. And so there is, that's supposed to drop in May. And that could help us if we also can do a supplemental budget, you know, once we pass this, if we find out that, you know, the Senate decides to do something and get more student opportunities act money into the budget, you know, and sort of even if we could, you know, have a little more chapter 70 as opposed to it going right off the top to the charter school, that we could take a look at that too with the other 5.1 million coming in over two years to the city, which certainly could, could help. Right, and I think that's the challenge the last two years with the budget, right? It's by now, typically, we have specific numbers that we're working with. Right. The good news for this year is we know there's more money coming in. We just haven't, you know, had the, the, the criteria on how you can utilize that yet. So it's not like less money coming in. So I think, you know, for, from the city and also from the school department, we know it's coming, but we haven't got the specifics on how we can spend it. So I agree, there is, there is, there is hope down, right. down the line. Right. The other question I have is could, where are we with the transportation contract? Um, Nancy, we're we're pretty good shape with the transportation contract. Yeah, if it's around there, we'll be open in, um, next month. Okay, so the bid for yeah, one company. Yeah, we we are um yeah, I think we have the information that it's um we had three, but the company that's taking over a working with Salter, we thought it was gonna be another company that we they joined with another company. Yeah. yeah. But this we feel it might be more reasonable than than what we anticipated, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many additional we've gotten a number of requests. Before the budget's done. Right. And we allocated the funding for that for the potential increase. Yeah. For transportation. How much did you suggest for an increase, Nancy? Um, you know how much it was around? Well, that's around. something we won't see. <laughs> yeah. Put in a record. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to. We do have we do have you money. Out. You look yeah. at uh, percentages and, and potential. Yeah, and potential. We don't want to put that up in a lot of bits. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Thank you. Yes. I just want to again, from, from, just for clarification, yeah. I'm from the mayor's so This budget that you presented with us balances the 140,000 that we're short is to get all the priorities that we want to. Right. If you recall, if you look at uh, February 23rd, we had, I think, all the priorities and everything we were looking for. Um, but as we as we get more information on that too, as we get more information on the COVID relief grants, then that assisted us um, with really, I think, adding a lot of those apps that were in the original preliminary budget. So that's that's why, as uh, Mr. Callan said, we're down to two positions right now. Um, that would be that entire priority list. Yes.
Um, even if we can't swing that, because I, you know, I would just suggest maybe we only hire one of the six day Spanish teachers and keep it as a survey elective like we used to have, and then try to add it in. But have we thought about maybe creating a secondary literacy chair and like turning one of our teachers into a point two and letting them oversee? And that's a, that's a job I did for years. So I, I know it's a model that, that's out there and it costs less than hiring a whole new person, especially when you consider uh, insurance and stuff like that. Yeah, I think, I think we, yeah, we, we're looking at, so there, there's always a plan B. <laughs> I think, I think the work you're talking about here, and I know we've discussed this, is really important. Really important. I agree. Um, I agree. We're not going to teach kids how to read and write and communicate well. Everything else is flawed, right? Thank you. All right. Uh, can we enter into the public comment? All right. Now we're going to enter into a uh, period of public comment regarding the budget. Um, and if you just raise your hand in the Zoom and if you do speak, give your name and address, please. And I see uh, Joe Devlin. Uh, yes. Good. Good evening. My name is Joe Devlin. I live at Three Dexter Lane in Newburyport, Massachusetts. I've got three children in the public school system. And I'm also a counselor at large. Uh, thank you for your presentation tonight, Superintendent, and the very good questions from the school committee. Uh, it was it was very informative. I'm speaking now to encourage the superintendent to include and the school committee to pass a budget that has all the items that you deem necessary to increase and enhance the educational opportunities of our students without consideration for how those items or the final budget number fit into or coexist with the rest of the city budget. With all due respect, that's not your job. Uh, you're not here to balance or help balance our city budget. As the uh, vice chair very precisely and eloquently and correctly said, your job is to advocate on behalf of our students and to produce the best school that, that you in your powers and, and us with our, our, our revenue can produce. There is no balance, budget for you to balance. You, the, the, to the vice chair's point, you don't have revenue that comes in every year that you can compare and say, I have to balance it. Every year, you could start from scratch. And it's up to us and the mayor's office to decide how this fits in with the rest of the city uh, budget. So you, you shouldn't be constrained by some arbitrary number. I, I heard another uh, school committee member ask, you know, what, whether you would balance the budget. There's nothing for you to balance. You know, you provide to us what you think is the best budget. And, and then we argue it in a public forum. We have you in for workshops. And, and in that public forum, it helps refine the issues and it helps resolve some of the issues by doing it the way you're doing it and not including those priority list items, which is chump change. It really is. You are, you are taking away part of the process, which is my ability and my other fellow and uh, city councilors to debate where the school budget and what that priority we place on the school budget and those things that you want in it, where they fit in with the rest of the budget. Instead, you're going with one person has told you this is what you can have. And that's what we end up with. At, and it's very frustrating after five and a half years in from the city council position to get that. Thank you. So I would ask you to pass what you think is best and let us do our job as well. And I really do appreciate all the hard work that you've all put into it. And I've really appreciated all the hard work that our teachers and administrators in the schools have. I've got kids in every one and they've done a really good job this year. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to participate in public comment? James Snow. Ms. Snow, you're all set. Ms. 
It's no, I think you're still muted. Okay, how's that? There you go. Thank you very much. Um, on one of the slides that you have, it says district supplies, um, staffing and te technology budgeted in SR2. And on the second line, it's a behavioral specialist at 100,000. Can you kind of give me some background as to what that person would be for that kind of money? <laughs> That's my only question. Yeah. Um, part of our previous uh, budget discussion, uh, the behavioral health coordinator would oversee a lot of our social emotional uh, programming uh, that we have in the district uh, and also really tied into the social emotional welfare of our students, especially coming back post COVID. Uh, the behavioral health coordinator would be a, uh, a pre K to 12, uh, working with our adjustment counselors, social workers, uh, guidance counselors, nursing staff, and really just providing um, the support for our students, uh, you know, mental health well being. Um, and also really tying in the wraparound services uh, for students and families, uh, you know, also overseeing the home for little wanderers. So this would be a uh, district position um, that we really believe would be very beneficial um, for oversight and supervision to provide the best uh, support for especially our students um, that may be struggling and families that are struggling uh, during post-COVID, um, you know, re-entry. Okay, thank you. Um, next we have Sharif Reed. Hello, um, good evening. Um, can you hear me just to confirm? Yep, you sound good. Thank you. Um, so I, I would echo some of Council. Sorry about that. Whoop, can you hear me? Sorry, it just seemed to have muted again. As you move things in the uh, yeah. participants, people need yeah. your address to the record. Yes, uh, Mr. Oh. Zeed, you need your address, please. Sure. Sharif Zeed, 192 Water Street, Newburyport. I'm just um, uh, taking this opportunity to uh, echo some of Councilor Devlin's point about, about bringing forward uh, a full budget, you know, and letting the process kind of work itself out. But actually, my question or my specific point in, is really... Um, asking the school committee to dive a little bit into the use, utilization of school choice funds. Um, you know, this year, for example, uh, there's about $1.1 million or so in the, in the budget as shown in the slide deck um, that is used from the school choice account. And I guess, and this may be a lay understanding, but, but sort of what's confusing about it to me is every year, um, the school district absorbs some revenue from school choice, um, ch typically off the cherry sheet. And then it's utilized, you know, uh, to some degree. And then typically, as we've learned towards the end of the year, there may be a transfer of maybe unused or under underutilized funds into that school choice account. And then that account is then in turn used sort of as a revolving fund to, to balance the budget. The, the problem really is that it's a pretty material number. It's, you know, just over a million dollars. And um, I wonder, you know, what, what is really the nature of that when money goes into it at the end of the year and essentially some spending is not occurring in order for that school choice uh, account to be refunded or added to, what does that really mean? Um, because essentially it feels a little bit like recycling. So um, I'm just posing the question, you know, to ask a little bit more, to learn a little bit more about what, you know, what's being done with that and, you know, what's happening late in the year, say, for example, in the district uh, that's allowing that fund to continue to sort of on an annual perennial basis, somehow be able to provide a million dollars of funding towards the school budget. Um, I'll just close by also um, expressing my appreciation. I know none of this stuff is easy and it's challenging to understand and very time consuming to go through. So I'm, I'm grateful for all the efforts um, by the superintendent and the school committee. And I, I'm hoping you could uh, take up my question at some point and just uh, figure it out. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Great, thank you. And uh, we actually have school choice updates on the regular part of the agenda. So superintendent, maybe you can address that question Mr. the Yeah. Or, or we could even do a more comprehensive at uh, May 3rd meeting. I think we do a presentation on that. All right, uh, that seems like it's the last public comment. Is there anybody else that would like to make public comment? Seeing none, um, can I get a motion to adjourn this part of the meeting? Yeah.
Second. Uh, I, oh, yeah. Steve. Steve. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Aye. Call the order of the yes, I'm calling for the meeting of our regular business meeting for the school committee for April 27, 2021. Mrs. Kennedy, would you please call the roll? Mayor Holliday. Present. Mr. Callahan. Here. Mr. Bennett. 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 Here. Mr.
each brought uh, particular elements that you know are relevant to the job the school district and I think where you know we would like to go and uh, uh, not to put the canary out of the coal mine but uh, if there's such a thing but I know at the close of our interviews uh, I felt that Mr. Little Hale had the strongest interview so uh, I think you hit on a lot of different things related to working well with people you know getting to know uh, the school district getting to know the operations, the fiscal operations, uh, and very importantly, you know, working with Nancy on the transition, which uh, you were very, and you asked some, I don't have my notes with you right now, but you asked some really, really thoughtful questions, whether they be related to uh, food service or other aspects. Uh, you asked about, uh, uh, you asked about trade licenses, which I was very impressed with. Uh, Maintenance uh, staff. So I uh, just found that you brought in uh, the ability to like really kind of hit on a lot of different things and kind of distill out what was most important. Okay. Oh, thank you for I had a, a great Zoom meeting with yourself, which is a thing everybody came to ask me specific questions and get to know you a little bit better. But I think the best distinction is I'd love to just hear your sort of impressions of the school right now, sort of what you see as some of the you know first um, steps in terms of your entering into our school district. And it's been a long time, I think you've had a big experience with you know, very, very confident uh, finance people person in particular who will be working with you to transition back uh, just, you know, just talk a little bit about you know your impressions of the district and why you want to be here and you know, sort of your first step i'm going to back up first my biggest challenge is going to be following uh, nancy and i jokingly said i think during the interview process that the first thing i was going to do was try to get her on a consulting contract <laughs> but i was told that she was going to go and hide in the um, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, the question came up, why Newbury Port, and one of the reasons is I live in Melrose and I've been working down in Hyde Park almost in Devon for the last five years. And after five years of trudging through Boston, you know, I leave up at six o'clock in the morning to avoid traffic, but then coming home at night, it didn't matter what time I left, it would be an hour, hour and a half vlog up to 28, it would be Boston. So I was looking for something a little closer to home. I mean, mileage wise, it's about the same up to here as it is down to Denham, but it's a reverse commute. So that was one of the things that you know, attracted me. I'm also looking for a smaller district so I can get more involved, a little closer to the work. When I was in Salem, it was about 4,000 students, not a large district, but not a small district. Over the last five years, I lived in Boston Renaissance, which is the largest um, single building charter school in Boston with 944 students. So it's you know, about four years of the size of Newbury Port. So again, I wasn't looking for a larger district, looking for something uh, more on the smaller side. Um, so, you know, again, looking for a different commute, and that's part of what attracted me up here. Um, I enjoyed the interview, those are good questions. I never know how to do an interview because I tend to interview and ramble on it and I don't like to. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, however, I, I, I do like to think during, if I do, when, when I do budget presentations, I tend to be, uh, Less worthy. Uh, I like to show pictures and not too much of other stuff. Uh, so I'm looking forward to coming up and for the challenges on the district in terms of the budget. You know, what's to be well funded. Uh, SR is going to drive all of us crazy in terms of the various grants and they keep changing the deadlines. So they've extended out SO1 to SR2 now to next June. As I was scrambling in my current job, trying to say, how's this going to the money by this June? Now all of a sudden we get another year. And I think the same thing can happen with SR3. The rules will probably change during the course of the next three years. So we have to keep on top of that. But it is a nice way to have that plan in place where we know the sort of the three years to figure out how we're going to make the best use of it. So I'm going to drop right now in terms of, you know, I told my current board of directors looking at all the problems that for this year, we had a horrible budget because, again, we didn't know what the numbers were going to be. So we had a very, very slashed budget. And I told them that, you know, this isn't a one year problem. The ESSER is going to be a three to four year problem. We need to use the ESSER funds to help fill in those valleys 
and smooth out the budget process over the next several years. So that's part of the strategy we're in now, and that would be part of the strategy that we put into the year as well. So just like that, and I, again, I thank you all. Looking forward to it. It's actually it's the worst travel this is the first time I've worn a suit in over a year. It's <laughs> <laughs> something you can't wait to see that day. <laughs> Specialist, 
and also a grade three teacher. She began her career for the North Middlesex Regional School District. During that time, she also worked as an ESL teacher, special needs teacher, Title I teacher, and also a grade three teacher. In addition, Ms. Ippolito has worked at Endicott College in Beverly and Merrimack College in Andover as an adjunct professor, working with teachers and future administrators. Uh, Ms. Ippolito completed her Master's of Science in Special Education and Bachelor of Science in Elementary Ed at Fitchburg State College. So it is a privilege and an honor to introduce Ms. Lisa Ippolito as uh, the Assistant Superintendent. Come on up. Hello. Hello. <laughs> So um, welcome, and um, you know, just as I said, uh, both interview committees had Ms. Ippolito scored her very high uh, as a top candidate and checking with her references, um, tireless worker stays there, uh, actually probably later than me, or even maybe Ms. Clark, so we have to run for our money. Um, but just, you know, one of the things that, um, really impressed me with Ms. Ippolito is she came into Reading um, in the elementary school that she's principal of was a level three uh, school and in one year um, turned that entire school around um, and from talking to her references year two um, some of the principals in that district and other teachers in that district said in the summertime when you're driving by Ms. Ippolito's school not only is there a car there but there's teachers cars there. Uh, and the teachers were coming in in the summertime on their own time, uh, working with Ms. Ippolito on reading strategies, math strategies, because uh, she really developed a positive culture. And not only was it a turnaround school, but people really enjoyed um, changing their teaching uh, instruction. And that's a credit um, to you. And we're very lucky to uh, have you help us with uh, curriculum instruction and professional development. So if people have any questions or if you just want to say uh, what made you uh, look at Newberry for us. First of all, thank you for the warm welcome into the Tucker family. So um, why Newberry Story? Um, I've done my homework and I've looked at um, the district's websites and school pay package and the um, there's what educational foundation and I just love the systems that are in place and how everyone is working together for the betterment of their students. I um, mean that's something I definitely would love to be a part of. Um, and honestly during the interview process, even though um, it was an intense process, just the people that I met during that time and the questions that they asked really solidified for me that this is a place where I want I want to be. The goals um, and the action steps that the district is looking to take to um, move the students forward. It sounds like right at my alley. Very excited. Anybody have any uh, questions? Yeah, um, welcome. Thank you. Um, one of the initiatives. Just following up on that, I know during your interview process, you talked about um, 
the work that your school brought you guys in time to talk to us and being one of a pilot school in the Commonwealth. We wanted to touch base on that because that's also been a, a, a real initiative for us with our literacy program in addressing um, this dyslexia and early, early screening. Great. Um, so I applied with my assistant superintendent at that time um, for the Initially, they're calling it the early dyslexia uh, screener, but now they're specifically it's actually two different roles with the early literacy screener and the dyslexia screener. And so, my school was selected to pilot uh, the education program um, for the year and give feedback to the stakeholders at the state level um, around um, isolation and how it works. We took it a couple of steps further to then take that data and information and inform our instruction um, for uh, all of our students. Um, and it was um, very successful. My current building also um, houses the language-based program. Um, and so we kind of, uh, I see things that are not in silos by themselves, but everything needs to tie together. Um, and so we took and made connections around, you know, the screeners and um, our language-based classroom and uh, changes in instruction um, and assessment and really individualized those kids need. And so this year, um, the, the district I'm in, we're actually switched to a, a different screener, early screener, because we wanted to compare and contrast the two to see which one gave us the, the specific data that we need uh, to identify students with early literacy um, difficulties. And then from that screener, um, what which assessments do we need further to give um, a better So, what was Yes. Yes. Mr. Ruth. Yes. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. Mr. Hawkeye. Yes. Mr. Callahan. Yes. Okay. Now, now you're on board. Now you're on board. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. I look forward to getting to know you all very well and um, and staff in the community. So thank you so very much. Look thank forward you. to it. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Um, uh, we have the consent agenda. Mr. Cole, do you have any warrants? Yes, we do. We have three warrants. All right, the first warrant. I move that the following name bills of the New Report Public Schools amounting in the aggregate $8,310.46 be approved and forwarded to the city auditor for payment. There are no conflicts. Second. Name is seven. There are none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Second warrant. I move that the following name bills and payrolls of the new report public schools amounting in the aggregate $14,279.85 be approved for the city auditor to make payment and deduct the funds from the school's account. There are no conflicts. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No, the motion passed. And the last warrant, I move that the following main bills of the new report public schools amounting in the aggregate $268,580.65 be approved and forwarded to the city auditor for payment. There are no conflicts. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Well, the third warrant has passed. Minutes for April 5th. I believe we have two. Sorry, we have the budget forum minutes and the standard meeting. Um, can we have a motion to approve the public budget forum minutes? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes passed. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. We don't. We don't. We don't. No. We're not remote. All right. And then the second minutes are for the standard school committee meeting on April 5th. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Um, Mr. Pett, one second. Sure. Um, when we were talking about the community dialogue update, I think I was the one who spoke about it as you were saying that was well, you may have spoken about it. Well, okay. We'll check out the board. Yeah, yeah. it's probably you. Yeah. 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 Uh, can the motion be to approve it with that edit? Yeah. And to approve the April 5th school business meeting minutes with the edit proposed by Mr. Mennon. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Can I ask a, a quick question? This is just a matter of format. There are a couple times in here where it says things like David Hawkeye has a question, the thin blue line. The verb questions is sort of antagonistic. And it's a lot different than ask a question about. So for future, for future format, could we try to use that? I don't mind approving these, but in years to come, people will remember this as a <laughs> sort of obnoxious statement that Hawkeyes are hate to believe or something. I will do that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Galliers, like in the tears over there. <laughs> Uh, we do not have the NHS student representative uh, this evening, so we will not be having that agenda item. So the next item is the Bring Change to Mind Club request for student activity account. Uh, Mr. Gallagher, could you yes, tell us what this is? Yes, this is uh, Bring Change to Mind. It's a nonprofit organization dedicated to encouraging dialogue around mental health and raising awareness for understanding and empathy uh, regarding that. So the mission of this club is um, it's really to end the stigma of discrimination surrounding mental illness. Uh, every individual who speaks out uh, inspires another and another. And that's 
what the focus of this club is going to bring on is to bring awareness around mental illness um, and then change change the mind. So this is a student-led club dedicated, you know, to mental health conversations. Very similar uh, work that Essential Partners is doing regarding constructive dialogue. Um, Trish Blackstock is going to be the advisor of this club, and they're just looking for school committee um, for approval of the student activity with Colin in that name. Second. All right, all in favor of yeah, approving? I, I, well, I'm sorry. Sir. Yeah, I just want to yeah. comment. I'm, I'm really happy to see this. It's really, I think it's a great idea. And, you know, looking at the student rep and the teacher advisor, I think it's two people that want more to be involved in this. I'm just, this okay. Great. Uh, any other questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Hereby, allow the student activity account to bring change to mind. Um, next item is the policy subcommittee. Uh, David Hawkeiser is going to be talking about this since he's not here tonight. Uh, take it away, Dave. Sure, we have two things. Um, one is, uh, Sean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we're supposed to approve the new restraint policy. And that's something that's been given to us by the state. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah, I can I can follow up on that. So this is part of the tier focus monitoring. So as, as you remember, we had a program coordinator review. So this is like the mid year, and the one uh, piece that they um, found was that our restraint policy was not updated. So we worked with our attorney uh, to get the. Uh, updated so we're in compliance with uh, state regulations. So this policy is very long. Um, you know, my recommendation is to approve this uh, policy for the first reading. And then what we'll end up doing is for the second reading to also approve it. And we'll have the attorney uh, do a one page summary for the policy book. And then we can make this as an amendment as part of the, so this will end up going in string policy We'll go in all the student inbox and all that. Um, you know, as we move forward. Yes. Well, if I remember correctly, wasn't it also communicating this policy to Correct. families yep. and others? So it's going to be updated on on our website. Um, so we're taking the old policy off. We're going to put the new policy once it's approved, and then we'll be reaching out to the families on the changes. Isn't that correct, Ms. Fox? Yeah. So. To have it a complete uh, corrective action, um, I will be sending out a blast to the entire community, the community, um, to read back to work, to alert them that this is a new policy. It will be on every website in, of the school's website. It will go into the handbook. And then what I will need to do so that we will have the free and clear of Jesse is send them the link um, once that's all done. Okay. I will send them the link and the communication. They will say, you are done. Okay. So we're going to vote to approve this tonight? Yeah. Well, I think this would be technically the first okay. reading. Okay. And then May, May 3rd would be the second. And then we can uh, get it up. to approve the first reading then? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, Mr. Carcazzo will go over the acceptance of ethics policy and operating principles and norms of interaction. And I have a question about this before we do. Um, this is the thing we sign every year that we didn't for what, COVID reasons, I imagine, right? Mm -hmm. um, no, we will do. We will revise things. Oh, revise things, yes. Okay. So uh, with Ms. Ridden not here, and we never actually signed it, signed it. Is this something that we can just kind of pass around via email? We don't have to be in the same room and sign it, right? You know, I would, my recommendation is since our meeting is next week. We oh, yeah. Push this off. Oh, all right. Let's start. Yeah, okay. Let Sheila make the presentation. And then just have the printed form. Right. Have the printed form. And pass it around. We can all sign it. I'm glad yeah. that that's we have right. also already looked on March 1st. We've looked through all of this. Yeah. Right. So this is the revised version. Yeah. 
haven't have we didn't never voted to approve it. So we didn't sign it. So we can sign this on Monday, that's fine. Okay. And we need a whole motion about that or we just agree? No. Okay. Out here, so uh, we can mark down that we're going to put that on the agenda for next week, and I'll send something to Joanne as well. Yeah, they have signatures for us, too. Yeah, Joyce, update from the superintendent. Yeah, so superintendent show tonight. Uh, <laughs> you know, trying to impress the new people we just hired. <laughs> <laughs> you stayed away from home. It was strategic, this is probably pretty important. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, so we're, we're still looking at the numbers. I, I'll have final numbers, I think, uh, for final approval on May 3rd. Uh, but as we're looking at uh, the bread, uh, the kindergarten numbers, um, we're kind of going to hold off on those until we see more uh, sign ups. We may have some spots at grade two, but we're kind of holding off on that right now. But the other grades that we think we can add uh, grade four. Uh, we're looking at adding 10 slots for grade four. So that grade three is a smaller class, um, current grade three. Grade six, uh, we would be looking at 10 slots, grade seven, 10 slots. And this eighth grade class is uh, a smaller class. So Mr. Wolf right now is looking at 15 to 20 slots. Um, I'll go back with our principals um, to give final numbers and get ready for May 3rd, but that's kind of the grades we're looking at, grade 4, 6, 7, and 9, and then potential uh, kindergarten grade 2. Yeah, I have a question. Um, are we thinking that, that because of COVID, that we won't be getting some kids back, so we end up at the other two because of Correct. Yeah. yeah, so that's why we're right now, this is what we, I just want to make sure before we approve those numbers on May 3rd. But this is from talking to the principals, what we're thinking. So I'm going to go back and work with Judy Webster and look at the students that are homeschooling right now, the grades are coming back. Um, so these numbers may change a little bit, but right now, if we're looking at potential grades, we're really looking at four, six, seven, and nine. Those numbers may change a little bit. Yeah, I was just, just, just a comment. Uh, I have seen those kind of numbers uh, 15 years. That's very significant. Yeah, I mean, right now, the current grade for grade eight is 177 students. Um, so typically, we're around 200 students uh, at the high school, you know, for each grade. The grade nine is 207, grade 10 is 216, grade 11 is the 183, and grade 12 is 215. So I just wanted to kind of put it out there. These are the grades that we're looking at, but the public's listening. Um, but those numbers, you know, may change. Uh, you know, it may not be as many uh, once we take a higher look at students that may be coming back in. Right. And because I imagine we have a lot of private school kids that come to school last year because we had a demand. Exactly. Right. All right. Uh, you again, Superintendent, here's the All right. So, full in person update. Um, as you know, we started um, the middle school, although they're going four days a week. This will be the first week they're going to go five days a week. Um, so, they already have a leg up, so we don't anticipate. They've already worked out um, because we've been here four days. The lunch uh, schedules, um, so it's been operating very well. And credit Principal Furlong and Mr. Marcos for all the hard work and planning. Uh, Mr. Wolf had uh, full in person today. The two areas yesterday and today, two areas they're looking at is the lunch areas. Um, you know, they're going to tweak that a little bit, but overall, it's going very well. And they're also uh, looking at their uh, flip of law. Um, wrapping their heads around that in, in the sense of adding a little more structure to that clip of law. Uh, with the potential idea is grades 11 and 12 with parent permission, eventually allowing the students, they don't need the extra help, uh, allowing them to leave 
uh, early, so there's not as many patients uh, you know, during that time. But overall, those are the two areas. Everything else, the classes, the passing, uh, you know, credit Mr. Wolf, his team, and the teachers, it's going well with more and more students in the high school. It's just tweaking the lunch and the flip of walk uh, down the road. So we'll have a little more specific on Monday. But the first two days of the high school are going pretty well. How are you doing the school testing there? School testing, uh, I'm just so impressed. Um, it's it's continuing. Um, you know, I, I think we've been over a thousand students and staff that have been tested since we started the school testing. Um, it's ongoing. Um, I can give you know, more specific updates as we're coming back from the vacation uh, to see if there is you know more positive cases uh, within the school community. But right now. And it's been working well. And by identifying, I think, students, it gives us an opportunity to really work with the, the teachers and the farm team and all of that. And, and as we know, with the pool testing, it's, um, it's the quarantine is not as long as it would have been without having it. And, and remember, we're extending that all the way throughout the summer. So August 31st um, is, is as long as the tests are coming in, which is great for the summer because once we start the summer, summer programming, we'll also be able to test the students on a weekly basis. Yeah. I think what you said about the in-person learning for the middle school, that was good. In-person learning for the middle school, we started April 12th. They've been going four days a week. So this will be the first week they're going to be going five days. But because they got a, a head start on that, they've already worked out a lot of the uh, uh, kinks with, you know, the lunch, the passing. And right now, the high school, um, their plan was to bring more kids back right before the vacation, but obviously we won't be no. So they're working on, you know, the two areas that they're going to continue to work on is the lunch, and then also uh, flip the block, adding more structure to that. But where, as a district, uh, where I think we beat all the the deadline, it was very proactive, it was very collaborative, um, and I think by bringing our students back a little bit early, it, um, it was very I think beneficial for the district. So uh, we had great nine. I mean. Pre-K all the way to grade 12, we're back. Um, I think the state is May 17th is the high school is the deadline for the state. So we're, we're back full in person by that date to date. So I'm really impressed and happy with the work that's going to be done. Two quick questions though. Do you know about what percentage of kids have come back to the high school? Coming back now? Yeah. Um, I can. I can probably have that data for you for May 3rd. Okay. Uh, sure. But I know it's, it has increased. Uh, when I was talking to Mr. Wolf, there's, there's a lot more students uh, back. And that's why they, they got to tweak lunch a little bit more in that clip of that. I know, I, mean, back. I know we said it's going to be a hard decision, yes or no. Are we maintaining that? Maintaining? We had heard from Andy Wolf that. That they're making like a hard decision. We either need to say you're remote or for the rest oh, of the year, yeah, we're coming yeah, in for the rest yeah. of the year. We're maintaining that hard line. Correct. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think it's around, I think at the last time it was about 130 students have chosen to go full remote, but I can have a specific update on that for Monday. And are we promoting vaccinations to the high school kids? I, I'm, I would say yes. I mean, I, you know. I'm just curious, like, I know at this point, like, I got an email and Lauren, they're taking walk-in visits. You don't even need appointments anymore because there are more shops available than people looking for appointments right now. I know when I, I went, I brought, um, in the Amesbury Regional, you know, on a personal note, yeah. I brought my daughter, who's in Connecticut, to college. And as I was there on Sunday, I saw a lot of the Newburyport uh, students. Right. So, and then especially since we're bringing the, the regional thing here. Regional yeah. coming right here. Yeah, exactly. it, just, it just seems like, hey kids, right. <laughs> yeah. let's all go 
going down the street Saturday. Battle Bar Skate Park. Right, we'll go there. We'll go there. We'll go for some ice cream or something like that. Let's get close. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just wondering if there's any sort of program or any sort of messaging. Yeah. I'll, I'll put that down. Um, to the That's kids directly, idea. or maybe um, to yeah, the parents using the, the Blackboard Connect thing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, plenty of appointments right here at the knock. People may not know, but they're senior, senior, old. Right. They, they may not know. Um, just those sorts of things. And I think. I think there was a far side cartoon about the vaccination man instead of the ice cream man. Here's that. So you can probably do some sort of marketing with that. We can put them in the chain inside the donut truck. Yeah, well, we got we got the man. We got the breakfast that all breakfast in the last <laughs> right. day. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's at some point. I mean, right, that's what that's what all the news is today that people that there are just more vaccines in a lot of places because people don't know about it or people aren't going to it, so they're doing more messaging and they're bringing people. I think that's a hundred dollar gift card or something. Right. I think it's a great idea. We're not going to do that. Oh no! I think that's a savings bond. Yeah, I think that's a great idea to promote that. We have our medical advisory meeting in the morning. We can bring that up um, to promote the students now getting vaccinated. Great idea. Let's roll with it. Um, for this Tom. That's all I have. Uh, last thing is new business. I have one new business fast. Um. Uh, the election in November means that potentially four of us are either outvoted or don't vote. So it was me, Dave, and Steve are up. Tom at the Wins Mayoral race is out. So that's a lot of speed. Um, so I want to start talking about putting you know, some sort of like uh, orientation package for new members because you know, dropping four people have no idea. And the mayor some weeks ago and I were talking brought up the mass screening, which is fine. But sometimes that happens. I believe Sheila and Sean both were in Spooking for months before the next you know date occurred. Um, I think there should be uh, everybody comes in with an actual physical copy of the copy of all the rules to the fund budget. Um, any number of things for simple procedures. Hey, this is how a meeting works. So when I was thinking I was going to put together a document, share with everybody, you got some adverb you want, the legacy members, of course, know most of the stuff, uh, the ins and outs. Put together some sort of a primer for people coming in, hey, this is what we do. And even before the election, so, you know, post that so that somebody who may be interested can see what's up. You know, what am I expected to do? Um, I think it kind of goes more into the minutia of running and being part of a meeting that our our current uh, our current explanation of what the school committee is may say. So that's my idea. I'm gonna start putting that together um, and share it with you all. And I think it'd be a great thing to offer to incoming members. That is all. Does anybody else have any new business? I just have one thing, I don't know if it's a question or not, but um well, we, we use Blackboard Connect to push out a lot of information from the district. I mean, could we push out our meetings to the district? And like, let's say, even if it's just the first or second page of the agenda, like, like the, just the points in the note every Monday or, or whatever. You know, we had two budget forums. I think we had four people speak out of the two, and two of them are pretty constant. Not that it makes a difference, it just makes me sad. But <laughs> that I mean, and not that I, we, I think we need to promote our meetings, but Maybe if that would just be a reminder that we could push out on our own, opposed to us trying to, you know, uh, you guys do want social media. I think also the PTO does it. Yeah, I mean, we use that for a lot. We use that for a lot of things that really, you know, don't have anything to do with the school sometimes, too. So it would just be another way to let people know what we're talking about and if they want to chime in, they can chime in. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know if we should do it or not. I'm just, I'm just, that'd be for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, we don't have to send the packet out per se, but but it's nice that we have like maybe the first two pages. Yeah. I'll contradict myself and say that it's also another great way to promote getting vaccinated when the when the thing comes yeah. here. But at the same time, we've been talking for years about a policy that would limit that use. Because I know I've talked to people who are like, if I get another email, 
for another like voicemail from the district. I just ignore them at this point. I would think that a third um, party could do it with people running the actual service should be able to use it. Yeah. Or, or a school entity part of the district. So, uh, I'm just saying that like between I guess. NEF events, which don't just come once, we get like multiple, like when the house, the kitchen tour comes up, that's that's at least a good 15 emails. <laughs> right? The kitchen tour, the golf tournaments, the PTO events, like it just becomes a bit of overload. Um, I go back to the fact that I think if we had a, the website designed in a way that, you know, on Fridays, maybe every Friday, we send out one email that says, hey, there are highlights on the following areas of the website. Here's a link kind of thing. Have a company with all these. Or on, uh, I know it's kind of an old uh, sentiment now, but like an RSS feed where people could sign up for different for announcements of so if the PTO updates their part of the website, people interested in that would get a, an email. If the school committee updated people, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I think that's a little old school right now, but.